what do you all think about this Green New Deal? Well, it actually isn't too green. It stinks. And you do know what's really going on. Joe Biden's got stuff up his sleeve like you wouldn't believe. We're going to be changing everything, folks, right down to your red meat. And then we have Bill Gates. Well, he has another whole plan going on. And what do you think that's going to be? Well, you're going to have to stick around to find out. And then we have... Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and I hope you're all ready to have your minds blown because you're not going to believe what some of this stuff that's going on with this Green New Deal is really taking place. You know, leaders of the countries like Brazil, Canada, and Japan, they all made commitments this past week on curbing their domestic greenhouse gas emissions and tackling climate change during President Joe Biden's climate summit. Surprise, surprise. Haven't we been down this road before, people? It just seems like we just keep going and there is no end you know they've been trying to work on this for how many years and all these scientists and stuff for years have been talking about climate change but all of a sudden now it's a climate emergency folks that's right we can no longer call it climate change it is a climate emergency the pledges come shortly after Joe Biden vowed to reduce U.S. emissions by at least 50% by 2030. Pretty aggressive, if you ask me. That's less than a decade, nine years to be exact, folks. I don't know how they're going to do this or even how they're going to pay for it. Seems this Green New Deal is a lot of green backs, if you ask me. And we're already, what, $27 trillion in debt, and we just keep writing checks and money out like it's water, folks. Somebody's going to have to pay for this. Wonder who that's going to be. Oh, but wait, the Brazilian government, the Brazilian president basically is telling the United States and has asked the Biden administration to provide $1 billion to pay for the efforts in the Amazon rainforest and everything else to put a stop to all the cutting and the burning of the Amazon rainforest. They want us to pay a billion dollars, folks, to basically stop what's going on. I see a problem with that, folks. I mean, come on, you want a billion dollars of our money to control a problem that you created that you don't control? Give me a break. Let's just think about this. You know, there's a billion dollars and they're just going to take it and use it for something else. And they're not going to really give two craps about what takes place in the Amazon rainforest. Because if they did and they were really worried about the climate change, they would have put a stop to this a long time ago. Now, let's talk about the methane gas real quick. All right. The methane gas that uh, all these different countries and everything say that is really contributing to our climate emergency that we're in. Fossil fuels is 33%. Livestock is 27%. Landfills and waste is 16%. Biomass burning is 11%. Rice agriculture is 9%. And biofuels is 4%. So basically, we, we just cut out everything. More than likely, if we just didn't exist, that would probably be even a better thing because then the world would be a cleaner place, huh? But that's why we're going to Mars, right? Because it's already clean. We can go up there and destroy that. But that's a whole nother video. Now, let's just cover some quick things that you might find mind-blowing, folks. So, under Uncle Joe's new plan deal here for his Green New Deal, no more red meat. He wants to cut 90% of red meat consumption in the United States by 2030. That's right, folks. No more red meats by 2030. I don't see that happening. I mean, let's be realistic. They want to allow you only four pounds of red meat per year. Really? I mean, come on, folks. Let's think about this for a minute. It's just ridiculous. So you come up with some, some of these most asinine plans that you've ever heard of. Just like, okay, electric cars. They want 50% of all cars made to be electric by 2030. Less than a decade. Okay? 10% of trucks. They want everybody tied to the grid. See where this is going, folks? They want you tied to the grid. So if you're a self-reliant person, if you're a... Uh, prepper or anything else, this should be a big wake-up call for you. They also want heat pumps for all. Now, these heat pumps in today's prices start at about $6,000 a piece. All right. Once again, we're tying you to the grid. 
They want to make sure that you're doing away with all types of fuels. They want natural gas gone. They want oil gone. They want gasoline, diesel. They even want, if you live out in the woods, a country or anything, you have a fireplace or wood stove, they don't want you burning that either to heat your home. You need to connect to the grid and get yourself one of those handy dandy heat pumps. I know folks, it's hard to believe, but this is what they're talking about. This is their agenda. This is the Green New Deal. You have places like California right now that are basically, well, they're come up with a plan and spending millions of dollars on a giant carbon vacuum. Basically, it sucks the air in, cleans all the carbon out, and blows the air out the other side. Leave it to California to come up with something that blows. So, then you had John Kerry. Now, he was at this nice little summit, and he did speak, and he made this quite interesting, totally ridiculous statement that is almost impossible to do. But here we go, folks. John Kerry, quote, we need to get all the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Well, how are we actually going to do that? We can't play another Mother Nature here, folks. Yes, we can reduce our carbon footprint on this world, but to actually get all of the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere is literally impossible. Think about it. They come up with these harebrained ideas and all these far-fetched ideas and then they wonder why the rest of the world leaders and everything else are kind of like looking at us like you people must be nuts and i think they are going nuts you know but then again speaking of nuts let's just move on down the road here Let's talk about what Bill Gates has planned for us. Now, he's all in cahoots with all this kind of stuff because, you know, they want all kinds of different things. He's the fourth richest person in the world right now. And he has secretly been buying up land in 18 different states all across America. He is now the largest landowner, folks. He has over a quarter of a million acres distributed out between... 18 different states. Now, the guy is worth $121 billion, so I guess if he wants to buy something, well, he can buy it. He gets away with it, all right? But what's he doing with that land? It's not going to be for farmland, and he's not going to have growing fruits and vegetables. No, folks, that's for his bugs, insects, and worms, and everything else that he wants to turn into, well, you guessed it, food for us to eat, since we're not going to have any more red meats. So we're going backwards in time, folks. Won't be long, and we'll be like the cave people. Only we won't be allowed to have a fire. We'll have to sit by our heat pump, won't we? You know, there's quite a few of these billionaires that are all in cahoots and all backing a lot of this Green New Deal and backing what uh, Bill Gates is really doing. You know, you have the Walton family. And now if you don't know who the Walton family is, well, walk into your local Walmart. They're the ones that own Walmart. All right. You also have Jeff Bezos. Well, he, you know, he's another billionaire there. You know, he owns Amazon, but he also owns Whole Foods and he wants to be in on this deal, too. Now, I want to show you a little quick video clip on what Mr. Bill Gates has planned for our meats and how he plans on doing it. Watch this.
United States of America? Is that the future for our kids, our grandkids, and everything else? Lab-grown meats, bugs, insects, worms, everything that they want to try to do. I think not, folks. As a prepper, what I would suggest people start doing is, maybe you need to start really looking into freeze-dried foods. Yes, it is the top of the line. It is the most expensive thing that you can buy for your preps as far as food products go. But they do last for 25 or 30 years, which pushes us past the Green New Deal. Or if you do have the money, you may want to start looking into buying your own freeze dryer. Yes, those things are going to set you back between $2,500 and $5,000. But at that point in time, you can freeze dry anything and make your own meals or just store your own products. Your own real meat, not lab grown and without bugs. Another thing that you're really going to have to start figuring out what to do is how you're going to get around the fuel. It is very difficult for most people to store a lot of gasoline for generators or, you know, a lot of propane and all those different types of things. Now, if you do live out in the country, you do live out in the woods, you always have wood. The trick is, are you going to be able to burn it? And are they going to have the climate police monitoring those areas where they know where people live? Or are they burning? Will they have satellites since there's so many of them up there watching over us? But where there's a will, there's a way, right, folks? You're going to have to really start paying attention to what is going on with this whole scenario. And if things really start to go south, well, we're going to have to make drastic measures. You're going to have to really start stockpiling as much as possible. But I don't think you're going to have to stockpile as much as vegetables and things, or you're going to have to stockpile meat. And figuring out how to do that safely, that's going to last for a very long time. That's going to be the trick if you can't afford the freeze-dried foods that you know are going to get you for 25 to 30 years. So maybe it'd be a good idea to save up money and buy maybe one can of a freeze-dried meat product per month and put it into your stockpile. At least you know it's good for 25 or 30 years. It's not like it's a waste. It's a lot cheaper for the common man in the sense of being able to afford than going out and buying his own freeze dryer. Because you see, you can do meats a lot of different ways, but the trick is to get it to last for that 25 to 30 years. The only real way to do that is freeze dried. So let's all just hope and pray that none of this does come to terms by 2030. The government has been trying to reduce all this climate change and redo climate change and get it under control for how many years now? I think it's all talk and no action. So this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope you all got a little bit of information out of this. Hope I didn't blow your mind too much. And I hope everybody keeps prepping. Make sure you're staying on the informative side. And if you want to really make things a lot easier, I would suggest everybody go to Ice Age Farmer's YouTube channel and watch his videos there. He does all the homework for you, folks. It's very simple. Click on his page and it's all right there. The websites, all the information, he breaks it down for you. And you know what? It's very easy to stay on top of because he stays on top of all these topics. So go to the Ice Age Farmer. Subscribe. I don't think you'll be sorry on that one, folks. This way here, you're going to be able to get the information you need when you need it. So you can plan for what the Green New Deal and the future holds. Because the miracle year is 2030. So until next time. I hope everybody stays safe, keep prepping, and keep your ears open. Pay attention to what's going on behind the scenes. Till then, catch you all on the flip side.